In this second tutorial, we'll explore creating another vase using the loft command. To start out, we're going to build different sections of the vase and adjust them to create the form. The first section will be created using the circle command. With the grid snap turned on, we'll snap to the center in the top view, expand out to create about a 4 centimeter diameter. Looking at the point count and how the shape is affected, we're going to change the makeup under the edit menu using the rebuild command. I'll select the curve, press enter, and change the point count to 24 with a degree of 2. We can now see there's more points that make up the form the individual points allow for a smooth adjustment of the circle. Hit escape to turn off the points. Here we'll zoom out. We can see in the front view that the grid doesn't extend as far as we would like. And we can change that in the file menu by going to properties, selecting the grid option, and changing the line count to 300 as opposed to 100. All of the other settings remain the same. This profile, with the number of points adjusted, will now be copied using the copy command. With the object snap turned on and the center option selected, we can hover over the edge of the object and find the center. This is where we'll select a point to copy from, and now holding the shift key, copy several profiles at different heights. And I'll put about seven curves in place. Press enter. You can put more or less depending on the design of your vids. With this selected, I'm also going to create a scaled version of the circle. Instead of using the copy command, I'll use the scale 2D command by right clicking. Hovering over the edge, I can find the center. I'll select another point. Within the command, we'll change copy to yes. So as we scale it, we also want to end up with a copy of the object. We can put a couple of those in place, including a smaller version on the inside. This will allow us to wrap the surface around into the inside of the vase to create the base. We can now select individual profiles using the gumball adjust their shape or size by holding shift and scaling them uniformly. Here I'll put an oval section in place, another oval section in the opposite direction. When you've adjusted the sections, we can go under the surface menu and use the loft command. With loft, it's important to select the sections in order at the similar area on the piece. Look in the right or front view to make sure that the seam is aligned, that all of your arrows are pointing in the same direction. If you need to change that, under the options, you can select Flip and change the direction of any of those arrows. And press Enter. With the preview turned on, you can see what the surface is going to look like, and you can play around with the different styles under this menu. And say OK. Going back a step, we can change some of these profiles, even adding or subtracting 
to end up with a different result. Under the surface menu, you'll use the loft command again, selecting the curves in order, making sure to select all of them, and press enter. This time, before proceeding, I'm going to use one of the modeling aids called Record History, found here at the bottom. Within the command, we'll turn it on, continue on, pressing Enter, selecting the style to finish it off. With the history recorded, we can now select any of the underlying curves. When they are adjusted, the entire surface will be affected. Using record history allows you to sculpt the form and see exactly how it's responding as you make changes. Those changes can include changing the profile shape, changing their position, or even by changing their underlying point structure. With one of the curves selected, we can turn on the points, and adjusting them with the gumball to change the underlying section. I'll now go through and make some adjustments to the form by changing some of the sections, their position, and their points. The next step is to add thickness to this form because we've created the form but we haven't assigned any material or wall thickness to it. It's currently at zero. To create the wall thickness, under the surface menu, we'll use the command offset surface. Select the surface. The distance will be around three or four millimeters depending on the scale of your object we'll adjust this option loose to yes. You can just click that to make that change and press enter. The arrows will indicate on which side of the surface the new surface will be offset. This creates the inside and the outside surface that now need to be joined by creating a lip that runs between the two. To do that, we'll use the Blend Surface found under the Surface menu, selecting one edge on the inside and the second edge on the outside. The seam and direction is indicated. You can just press Enter, let it fill in. Go through and make some adjustments with the preview turned on so that you can see how the final rim will result. Once you're happy with it, you can say OK. 
These surfaces now need to be joined together using the join command, selecting the inside surface, the top surface, and the outside. To close the object entirely and make it suitable for manufacture, we also need to close this opening found at the bottom of the base. There are two holes that need to be closed using planar curves found again under the surface menu. Select the edge or the curve in place and create a planar surface that can then be joined to the rest of the form. Make sure you join both of them to create a completely closed volume.